All we want to present here is our file on number 5418600, one which is our 24 inch motorized height gauge. It's a 1D gauge. It's called the Filo Z600. Uh, we've got a measuring range here of 24 inches. We've got an application range of 36 inches. That's because we could take this probe holder and move it into this position. The accuracy over the, over the range of the gauge, over the 24 inches, is a little bit over 2 tenths. Repeatability is about 2 microns or 80 millions. The, the formula for the accuracy is 3 plus uh, length travel divided by 250. But on a 24 inch gauge, again, it's a little over 2 tenths. Okay? Uh, it's, a, it's a 1D gauge, as I said earlier. It does all your basic measurements, IDs, ODs, set lines, heights, widths, depths, slots. Basically, 80 to 85 percent of everything a CMM will do. Okay, it's got um, its own air pump. If I press this button down, that moves that around. Nice large display, easy to read. Uh, function keys that are very easy to read. Um, it uh, has an eight millimeter probe holder. We can use, this is our standard probe that comes with it. There are accessory probes available for it as well. It also has direct RS-232 output in case you want to go into a computer or printer or any other data collection device. Okay, those are the physical characteristics of the gauge. Now we're just going to go over some of the operation of the gauge. There's a power switch in the back. I'm going to turn that on. Uh, this is battery backed up so you can charge it, uh, charge it overnight. And it'll be good for you all day long and uh, you don't have to worry about the charger being connected to the gauge. Okay, now that we've got the display on, if we hit any key, you'll see that the gauge will reference itself. So it's motorized and it's going to reference itself to the surface plate and set zero on the main reference. Okay, now we've got that zero off of the surface plate. And you'll see here on the display, you'll see the zeros here. We've got 50 millionth resolution. Uh, you'll see the reference up here is our zero reference. Um, you'll see the the uh, probe diameter is six millimeters and you'll see that we're an inch. So that's what you're going to see on the display as you're taking your measurements. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that we have the right probe in there. So to do that, we're going to get our probe constant. And to do that, we have our master, our probe master right here, which comes with the gauge. Okay, and I'll hit this key here. We'll put this under here and I hit this key and it's automatically going to take our probe constant. Okay. Now I'm coming moving this over and it's going to come down. There's our probe measurement. Okay. 236 within 50 millions. Okay. So I'll take this away now and I'll hit C for clear. It takes us and now we're in measurement mode. So if I want to come down to the surface plate um, I just hit this key here, the down arrow, and it brings us to the surface plate. Of course, we zeroed off of the surface plate, so you're seeing zero there. Now, the nice thing about this gauge is that we have the motorized displacement, and we also have a manual displacement. So we don't have to wait for that motor all the time. I can just simply come down, okay, and then hit this key and get our measurement. Okay, so you've seen that we've, we've got our probe constant, we've zeroed out on the surface plate. So now, if we want to come over here and take this height measurement, as I said earlier, I can just move the carriage, bring it close to where I want to be, and I'm going to hit this down arrow. There we are, there's our measurement. That's from the surface plate to this land. Okay, now if we want to do a diameter measurement, all I have to do is hit this key. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it into a diameter, okay? And this key is our ID diameters. We have three main keys here that are going to be doing most of your measurements. This down arrow key for lands, and then you have IDs and you have ODs. Okay? So let's just do this ID first. We come in into the ID, we hit this key, it's automatically going to go to the upper radius. Now I'm going to sweep across this upper radius. Okay, so when I start out that measurement, I want to be a little bit off center. Now it's moved down automatically to the lower radius. I sweep across there and there's our diameter. Okay, so here's our diameter and there's our center line from the surface plate. Okay, so we've, we've done the ID of the internal diameter here. You noticed 
that, and I'll show you here, that we put the probe a little bit off, off center of the radius. So we put it up here and we scanned across the radius. That is so we can capture the high point of that radius. If you notice the numbers, when they moved, when we scanned across the bottom, same thing, we moved across here, we find the lowest point of this radius, and that gives us the diameter. The nice thing about this gauge is that when you do scan across here, you'll see the numbers will move, and when it sees the highest point of that radius, they'll freeze. So you don't have to look at any lights or any needles or anything. You'll find, it'll find the high point automatically. So here's our diameter, and then there's our center line. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the diameter of this OD. I'm first going to set zero off of the center line of this ID because we want to find out the parallelism of this ID to the OD. Okay? So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to hit this reference key. Okay? And now it's going to zero out the center line of this ID. I'm now going to measure the OD. Okay? So we bring it over, bring the probe over. Okay? and put it in position. You notice I'm a little bit off center from the radius. I'm going to hit this key for the OD. It's going to come up, make contact. I'm going to sweep across now, okay, like I did earlier. The numbers are going to move. Okay, now I'm going to, it tells you what to do here. I'm going to bring it up into position. I'm going to come down. I'm going to hit enter, okay, and then I'm going to sweep across, all right, and then it's going to give me the diameter of the OD. So here we have the diameter of the OD, okay, and then we have the centerline deviation. So it's telling me that the, the centerline of the OD and the centerline of the ID, there's only a deviation of six tenths. So this is pretty parallel, okay? So if you think about it, I've only hit three keys to get that measurement. I've hit the ID key, the reference key, and the OD key. Okay, we've done some basic measurements, so now we're just going to go into uh, doing a uh, min, max, and TIR feature. Okay, and to do that, we hit the menu key. Okay, and we're going to select functions, number three. And we're going to select number three, min, max, delta, or TIR. Okay, so to do that, it will ask us, do we want the min, max from the top or from the bottom? And here, we're just going to, what I'm going to do here for demonstration purposes is just get us the the run out of this surface right here. So I'm going to just hit enter. Okay, it's going to come down automatically, makes contact. At this point, it's got load on it, so now I can just move this around the surface. Okay, and it's going to give me the run out of every area that I covered here. Okay. If I hit clear, now it's going to give me the, the maximum number, the minimum number, and the delta, or the max minus the min. Okay, now you can use that on a cylinder as well. So if you in between centers, you put load on it, turn it one time, it'll give you the min, max, and delta of that cylinder. So that's a very nice feature to have there. If I hit clear again, it takes me out of that mode and I'm back into basic measuring mode. Now that we've taken some measurements, we do have this memory feature. So if I hit this key, it brings up a couple selections. We can view the memory or we can clear the memory. Well, we're going to view the memory here. And now this will show us all the measurements that we've taken over this period of time. And what I can do here is I can select a few, few of these measurements and we'll clear out of here. We'll go to menu, for example, and we're going to select functions. And I'm going to select the distance between a couple features. We're going to select the distance between um, let's just say feature number two and um, feature number five. And there's our difference between the two features. So basically here we can take our measurements obviously using the probe and the carriage and we can also take measurements using the memory and taking two different features or any features that are left in the memory and hitting that function key and getting our results. Okay, now that we've finished the operation of the gauge, let's recap a little bit the features of the gauge. Okay, we've got 0 to 24 inch travel measuring range. We get 0 to 36 inches of application range because we take this probe and put it up here. Uh, over that range, we've got accuracy of a little over 2 tenths. And we've got repeatability of 2 microns. 
Uh, we have a display that's battery backed up when it's fully charged. It's got about 16 hours of battery life. Uh, it has its own air pump. Uh, it does all your basic measurements of IDs, ODs, center lines, heights, widths, depth, slots, basically 80-85% of what a CMM will do. Um, and it also it is uh, available with a three-year warranty. So that's that's the Z600 Fowler gauge, 54180600.